In the previous episode, we went through the benchmark exercises you should be testing and performing to get you towards your first pull-up. In this episode, I will discuss scaling options for pull-ups themselves. So scaling pull-ups, we have toe-assisted, jumping, banded, and box pull-ups. It's important that alongside the strength building we performed with last week's exercises, that we actually perform movements that move along the same plane as the pull-up. In a CrossFit workout, pull-ups are a staple exercise. It is really important, therefore, that you have good options to choose from when scaling. We'll start with the toe-assisted pull-up. This is a very underused exercise. Set up with a low bar that allows you, when stood on your tiptoes, to get your chin over the top of the bar. Lower yourself down to full extension. From this position, using your lower body as little as possible, pull yourself up into a pull-up. Remember to maintain the active shoulders, as much of a hollow position as you can through that tight midline and your chin neutral at the top. As you get stronger with this exercise, rather than having the sole of your foot on the floor, you can go to your tiptoes or your toenail and that will give you less assistance, making this exercise more challenging. As you can see. Our next option is a band assisted pull-up. We wrap a band around the pull-up bar like so, and then either under your knees, or my preferred option of your feet, will allow you to gain assistance from the band on the way up. I prefer under my feet, as you're able to hold a hollow body position from here. Choose a band that provides a challenge for the number of reps you are aiming for. And again, we're maintaining those active shoulders and that hollow body position throughout. The advantage of a banded pull-up is you can, to some extent, measure the progress by the level of assistance, the thickness of the band. However, they can be a bit difficult to get into mid-metcon, and also the assistance is variable. In other words, it's greatest at the bottom of the rep, so you're working hardest at the top half, but hardly working at the bottom. My suggestion of these is to only use a green or purple band or lighter, not something heavier than that. If you're unable to do it with a band this light, then choose a different scaling option because the assistance on stronger bands is not only too much to facilitate any real strength gains. I have witnessed more than one person get flipped off the rig when they take all the body weight into their hands at the top of the pull-up or when the band becomes detached from their feet and they flip and fall off that rig. The risk reward is just not worth it. Improve your strength to body weight ratio before moving to this if you require more than the lighter bands. Our third scaling option is the jumping pull-up. So you start from holding a bar, which allows you to jump your chin over the bar. Ensure you drop to full extension before jumping up and over for your next rep. A couple of things to pay attention to. Ensure you keep your shoulders active when you drop and don't just jump and drop down into the shoulder joint like so. You want to stay active. Make sure you get to the front of the bar at the bottom of each rep to prevent this kind of bunny hop jumping pull up where you're not working as hard. So always we always say, make sure you get your shoulders in front of the bar so you're resetting, jumping, resetting, and jumping on every rep. Ensure you have a controlled descent, but not a slow descent. Controlled, not slow. I'll cover negatives and isometrics in a future episode, but for regular wads, we do not want slow negative descent. This is a risk of rhabdo. If you've not heard of that, it's a painful condition that will cause your arms to swell and probably not allow you to straighten them for several days. Come down for each rep under control, but not unnaturally slowly. The advantage of a jumping pull-up is they're easy to perform. You can closely match intended stimulus especially for fast moving fran like workouts and progress can be made and judged by increasing the distance you start from the bar or lowering the box you're standing on. This advantage is there is a risk of injury if you perform with slow negatives or jarring the sense where you're hanging from that shoulder joint. 
You can make it too easy by overusing the lower body, it becomes a calf exercise. And similar to banded is that you are training the top half more effectively than the bottom. Finally, we have box pull-ups. This is a new one that you do not see as often, mainly because it takes up a little more space in the gym. So using a lower bar, we set our feet up on a box that allows you to hang on the bar and get your torso as vertical as possible. Okay, not as easy to get vertical on this one. And then perform that pull up. Like so. Now the advantage is you can vary the assistance by having your legs further away to lengthen the lever or bringing the box closer and bending the knees as I did there. And you can even use your legs to assist. It can be more challenging for the range of motion than most other scaling options. The disadvantage is obviously it takes up quite a lot of space and you need quite a lot of focus to maintain that vertical torso. You may have seen in my reps, it was a tendency for me to lean back a little bit as I'm doing that. So which scaling option should you choose? There is no ideal when it comes to scaling options. I like athletes to vary their scaling options for each workout. And often we'll instruct coaches and our athletes on which options to offer or to choose for different workouts. Don't forget as well that we still have inverted rows and ring rows as a viable option for pull-ups too. So although the plane of motion is different, it is still working upper body pulling. To give you some idea of how to scale your workouts, here are some basic guides. Non-crossfitters, you're gonna to need to Google these wads. For workouts that are intended to be fast and furious, such as Fran or Jackie, I like jumping or light banded pull-ups, if the athlete can do big sets with those. For longer, slower workouts with small sets, such as Cindy and partitioned Murph, I prefer rows or box pull-ups. For Cindy style workouts, especially because they include press ups, and a lot of the time the athlete is scaling both movements so they can perform the press ups on the box or the low bar to utilize one piece of equipment for two movements. Toe assisted pull ups work on both types of those workouts because you can vary the assistance to suit. You do have some other scaling options as well. I like to add a little bit more variety sometimes in that we may use weighted rows such as the Pendley row, the Renegade row, or the Gorilla row to replace pull-ups. We use these a lot when we're locked down and able to access the rig, and they're good options as well if you're limited on equipment or just feeling stuck on your options at the moment. But whenever possible, try to keep your movement gymnastic and pull your weight more often than you are pulling an external load. If you're in a Globo gym, then for strength workouts, you could add in the lat pull down and the machine assisted pull up too. I would not include these in a Metcon because you would certainly drop the intensity getting on off those and just using those machines, they are a lower intensity option. So to summarize, you've got multiple ways to scale pull ups in a workout to move you nearer to your first pull up or just improve the volume of pull ups you have. Try and mix your options as much as possible to keep variety in your workout that's got a physical and mental benefit for you. For athletes with some pull-ups, or maybe if you could do palm basic chin-ups, I would always suggest scaling the volume of reps to a number that you can achieve. So maybe rather than doing five reps per round for Cindy, you just do one if you've got those. If you do have a chin-up, a palm basic chin-up, but you don't have a pull-up, then for some workouts, do chin-ups instead of banded pull-ups. You will see progress much faster doing this. Your three workouts this week are three versions of the CrossFit Girls. Scaling these to fit your ability. What I want you to do first of all is Fran. That's a 21-15-9 couplet of thrusters and pull-ups. And for this workout, I want you to scale your pull-ups to jumping or light banded. Then we're gonna do Cindy, which is a 20 minute AMRAP with five pull-ups, 10 press-ups, 15 squats. For your scaling for the pull-ups today, I want you to use box pull-ups or toe assisted pull-ups for this workout. If you have a chin-up or a pull-up, scale to a number you could complete unbroken, which might be one. Your third workout for this week is Helen. That's three rounds of 400 meter run, 21 kettlebell swings, 12 pull-ups. The scaling for this workout is a variation you did not use in the previous two, and you can use inverted or ring rows as an option for this. 
Good luck with this week's training. Post scores in the comments below. Remember to have two days rest in between each workout so you can rest those muscle groups that use that movement. Your next episode will cover some more ways to keep building that strength to improve your pull-ups or get you to your first one. Thanks for watching, guys.